All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the sincere apostles and elders of a great millstone who are my teachers, and peace and salutation to you brothers out there preaching this word in truth and sincerity. This is the brother Yahweh Sop with another lesson. All right, today, just going to get into some news and prophecy. Uh, I have an article in this video that I want to go ahead and play for y'all, and then we'll get into uh, some scriptures, man, lining it up with uh, current events that are going on around in the world. All right, and to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and North American Indians, you true biblical Israelites, hey, it's high time to awake and repent, all right, because this place, America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, in the scriptures is about to fall and be completely decimated, man, and that decimation, that destruction is coming from on high, from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, all right, and we're coming very nigh unto those times of uh, destruction, man, so if you don't repent, you don't get right now, well, you're not going to have too much time to to do that man so it's uh, better to be safe than sorry so uh, i'll go ahead and let this video play uh and then we'll get into some scriptures i'm required to register for the draft but that could soon change thanks to lawmakers on capitol hill mike emmanuel live in washington with more hi mike Martha, good morning. The Senate version of the National Defense Authorization Act, which sets out military and national security priorities, would require women to register for selective service. Missouri Republican Senator Josh Hawley is not a fan, writing on X, quote, I'm not voting for any defense bill that forces my daughter to register for the draft. Not now, not ever. And he's not alone. Texas Republican Congressman Chip Roy also reacting on X, quote, you can go straight to hell over my dead body. The argument for women being a part of the draft comes from experts such as the National Commission on Military, National and Public Service. It concludes, quote, this is a necessary and fair step, making it possible to draw on the talent of a unified nation in a time of national emergency. Why don't you own commercial real estate? Yes, you. Why don't you? Emergency. Now, there are two different versions of this bill, one in the House, one in the Senate. So it's possible women in the draft could get dropped as lawmakers iron out the differences. So why is the military recruitment in this country such a mess? That's just what the top, one of the topics Fox Affairs Weekend Code Speed Hexes addresses in his new book, War on Warriors, Behind the Betrayal of the Men Who Keep Us Free, which is out today, and you should pick it up. In the book, Pete Wright. That's right. It's out today, and a portion of it is about recruiting. Why aren't guys joining? And I wrote, we can't wait to recruit our largest and most important military demo until a crisis occurs. That's normal, strong men. But that's just what the Biden woke policies have done. A social justice military fails to recruit the masculine men who make up our warrior class. No wonder there is a massive recruiting crisis in our military today, and there is. So, Pete, let's explore some of the stuff that's in this book. Yeah. I'm on page 112. Let's go to the next wall. All right, so th these are the recruitment numbers right here. We had a segment a few months, a yeah. uh, few weeks ago, and they said that it's actually going up, but there's deeper uh, numbers. So these are 2023 20, numbers. They're all down. Army, okay. and they, you, if you're down 15,000 troops, that's a division. That's a division that you have in staff with young privates. So Navy's down, Air Force is down. Marine Corps meets it because it's a little bit, their ads are a little bit more, hey, you know, the so, few, the proud, the Marines. In 2024, they say they're going to meet their goals because that's their, they're reducing the goal number. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. They're taking gotcha. the number down, saying, oh, we don't need as so, many troops. So when they say they're on pace, it's because the number has changed. Yeah, they lower the standards, like everywhere else in the military. Lower the standards. So there's also the 77% of military Americans do not qualify. So, Why don't they So qualify? this is what you hear from the Pentagon all the time, Lord. Okay. Well, the reason we're not meeting our standards is because 77% of young people can't join. That's legit. I mean, we're too fat. We're not smart enough. Mm -hmm. uh, you got medical records uh, and other uh, criminal records. 77% mm -hmm. of 18-year-old kids can't join the military. That's a problem in and of itself. But that's a number that's more or less been the same for over a decade. So this is not new. This is not new. But it is, it's a real reason, but when they tell you that is the reason, it's not the only reason, Lawrence. So let's get into why. Yes, that's the big thing. The big reason is they're observing the types of recruiting ads and efforts that this military is pushing. Some folks who've seen this uh, network might remember this ad from mm -hmm. the military. Watch this. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot Missile Defense Systems. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. 
So does this? I miss the recruitment effort. Does this inspire you? No. All those young men in Kentucky and mm -hmm. you know Ohio and all of them. They say, oh yeah, that's the army I want to join. They miss the mark. It's just like a Bud Light moment, Lawrence. Mm -hmm. We don't want those frat boys. We want a different type of demo. Well, there are only so many ladies with two mommies that want to join the army. Mm -hmm. You need normal, masculine men that want and women that want to join to fill our ranks and always have. Real quickly, Pete, when did this sort of push start? This like, is, how long has this been going on? It started on? under Obama, but it's been on hyperspeed under Biden. I mean, mm -hmm. Trump paused it and will, has said, he said in our interview with him, I want to get rid of woke military. I believe he will, and recruiting will come back as a result of that. But, Lawrence, there are other reasons why, too. Um, so, it's not just the ads. Mm -hmm. You saw the vaccine mandate pushed out a lot of yep. conservative, Christian, you know, Folks that by, by uh, principle didn't want to do that, the debacle in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. they looked at how our military was treated, how that was handled. Uh, then, of course, military families, Lawrence, we were talking about yeah, this I'm before the, first the segment. generation not to serve. 32% in 2023 of military families are, are recommending that the next generation serve. That's way down. But why is that happening? Because I hear from SF guys, obviously, my family, who all serve, told me not to serve. Yeah. People that love the country but are encouraging their kids not to serve. Why is that happening? Because they've seen the military change. They don't want their kids signing up to join an institution that doesn't reflect their values, that doesn't put meritocracy and lethality first. They're tinkering with social engineering. And as a result, the cream of the crop isn't rising. So the guys who have been there, done there, been to Iraq, Afghanistan, Guantanamo Bay, they say, I don't know if I want my five boys joining or not. That's why I end the book with a chapter that says the letter to my sons. Do I want you to serve or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree that this is an America that U.S. citizens no longer want to support? And as a result, we're probably going to need a draft because nobody wants to sign up for the U.S. Hey, and that's right, man. You're very soon going to see a lot of uh, young men and women, as we just seen, hey, get drafted into this war, man, because you have Russia and China gearing up, man, uh, Russia and North Korea. Hey, all these countries are starting to uh, build up upon their economies, upon their armies, upon uh, uh, the the uh, warlike mind that they are gaining. And it's all for what? All according to prophecy to just completely destroy this place uh, known as America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. You know, so it's a beautiful thing to see that this is happening because it shows that the Messiah, Hawashai, is about to return, man. So this is going to be the book of Revelation chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse 10. And it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Amashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And that's right. How did he accuse you so-called Negroes, Latinos, North American Indians? Hey, well, he painted you as the face of crime. All right. He painted you uh, as the face of the alphabet movement. All right. He painted you as the face of all wickedness, man. All right, saying that you so-called Mexicans are rapists, you so-called Negroes are monkeys, all right, you so-called Native Americans are drunks and no-gooders, and so on and so forth, man. All right, uh, calling our people all types of bywords and uh, um, evil sayings, man. All right, and so it says in verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And that's right, because this place is polluted, as it says in Micah 2. We'll go ahead and grab it. But as it says in Micah 2 and verse 10, a hey, this place is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sword of uh, destruction. The book of Micah chapter 2 and verse 10 says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. And that's right. And you see our people, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, North American Indians, waking up to who they are, man, and starting to completely leave this place, man, spiritually first. You know, they're starting to wake up and see that this government is not for them. And we know that hey, when they're talking about these things, that very soon is going to be passed. Why? Because we see that the war is getting worse and worse, man. They are... Uh, getting ready to fight multiple wars on uh, with uh that have multiple fronts a hey, and they're gonna need those people to be able to sacrifice to continue to fight these wars man all right and so it says continuing it back in the book of uh revelation chapter 12 and verse 12 it says therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time and that's right esau edom the so-called white man the red hebrew edomite that is currently ruling this world right now he knows that he has a short time man he knows that yahushua is about to return the same way that we're seeing the signs in the heavens
All right, we're seeing the signs of the times. We're measuring the time diligently. Hey, he's doing the same thing, but on the left-hand side, man. All right, and in fact, he's trying to prolong his days. He's trying to uh, make them last, man. Why? Because he knows that a Yahweh Shai is about to return. All right, he knows that his time is almost up. And so he's going to start recruiting. Hey, he's going to start drafting people into this war, all right, to fight, uh, to fight this war for him. All right, all the meanwhile, he's going to be doing what? Trying to take control over the whole globe man and chip you people man with that rfidc hip that that uh motb that's spoken about in revelation 13 all right which this now leads me uh to my next article which if you don't believe it hey this is the bill hr 8070 service member quality of life improvement and national defense authorization act for fiscal year 2025 and so it says the latest action on the 14th of this month, the clerk was authorized to correct section numbers, punctuation and cross references and to make other necessary technical and conforming corrections in the engrossment of H.R. 8070. And this bill was actually voted on. I believe it was a uh, 200 and uh, 219 to about 190, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see if I can get the exact numbers on this one second. All right. And so the current uh, the current tracker uh, says that it's a passed in house. I can't uh, find the exact number of what it was voted to. But, you know, you can do that research on your own. Uh, but the bill is H.R. 807090. And so these things are go going to be implemented. All right. And so from here, I want to go ahead and uh, get to this. It says uh, W.E.F. pushes plan to seize control of oxygen supply. All right. And so it says World Economic Forum the, or otherwise known as WEF members have been discussing plans to seize control of all elements of nature that humans rely on for survival, such as food, water and even the oxygen supply. During the WEF annual meeting of the new champions, also known as Summer Davos in Dalian, China, globalists declared that natural systems are finite and must be corporate corporatized corporatized whatever that says uh during a summer davos panel panel discussion wef speaker lindsey hooper blasting members of the general public for expecting water and oxygen to be unlimited and free says hooper the university of cambridge institute for sustainability leadership ceo argued that food water and oxygen are forms of natural cap natural capital that global go Ah, so like you, that global elite must put on the balance sheet. We can't do business on a dead planet. She warned fellow WEF members gathered for the annual event. And so it says Hooper pushed the plan during the panel titled Understanding Nature's Ledger. During the panel, globalists argued that every part of the economy depends on nature. They concluded that in order to protect natural system, un unelected corporate elites must bring nature onto the balance sheet. If we're going to protect natural systems, one of the solutions is to bring nature onto the balance sheet, bring nature into the ways that decisions are made within business to allocate a value to it, to bring it into accounting and financial mecha mechanisms, Hooper explained. And so pretty much a day are planning to completely take control not over not only over you a hey, but the whole planet man and why is that well let's go ahead and jump to the book of isaiah chapter 14 all right and we'll go ahead and uh Start at verse 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in mine heart, the, uh, in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yahweh. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And so that's the whole reason that they're causing all these things to come to pass man all these distraction all these wars all these all these things that they are planning behind closed doors a hey, they're now bringing to light and the most high is exposing it all right and the way that they paint it is in a good uh position for you you know like uh the that dude claude schwab said he said that you will own nothing and be happy all right why because they are planning to take everything from you all right, as we read in Revelation 12 and 12, hey, the devil knows he has a short time, and so he's going to come down with that great wrath. All right, and so this is important that you pay attention and you understand what's going on around you, because if not, hey, well, you're going to get caught up in the judgment that's about to take place from on high. 
the book of uh, Ecclesiastica is also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 10. And it reads, never trust thine enemy for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. And that's right. Hey, even though he tries to hide it, eventually it comes out again. You know, and so it says, verse 11, though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust has not been altogether wiped away. And that's right, because no matter how he paints himself, the image that he paints himself in, you know, as a God, as a do gooder, as someone you want to aspire to be as that's not what you want to a hey, that's that's ultimately not who he is man he's a he's a demon you know behind closed doors he's a hey, raping children all right taking it taking their organs selling them on the black market man all right a hey, uh, uh putting poison in your food and your water all right it, it, doing all types of wicked nefarious things behind closed doors and all these things are now being brought to light all right. And so now when you watch these things, which I'm going to go ahead and let another video play, which this is it right here. But when you watch these things and you pay attention and you have the understanding that this is not something that is good for you. Hey, well, then it's easier to see it starts becoming plain. Hey, the, uh, that spirit is given to you, the spirit of understanding to see that hey, this is a devil planning some very nefarious things for you man so i'm gonna go ahead and let this video play uh that way you can hear it for yourself and then we'll get a couple more scriptures and get out at the moment the way that decisions are made uh, on an everyday level within businesses and financial institutions is because we're looking only at financial data financial metrics that are not factoring in nature nature is treated within the economy as though it's unlimited and predominantly as though it's free. And the risks and harms are simply not costed in financial terms. They, we can cost them at a macro level. They're not costed into day-to-day decision-making. And the result is, as a consequence, we've put all of our economies at fundamental risk. We can't do business on a dead planet. If we're going to protect natural systems, one of the solutions is to bring nature onto the balance sheet, to bring nature into the ways that decisions are made within business, to allocate a value to it and to bring it into accounting and financial mechanisms. And so you heard it right there. That that's just, This is the things that they're planning, man. This isn't some conspiracy, this conspiracy theory. This isn't something that is uh, being made up. This is coming out straight from the horse's mouth, man. And so continuing reading it, it says Hooper warned WEF members that efforts to further expand wealth and power are not sustainable on a finite planet. According to Hooper, the ways in which we have grown our economies, our models of economic development have been incredibly successful for global prosperity. But this whole time, hey, you, you take a look at what's happening over here in America uh, and not only over here in America, but the whole world, really. But um, I'll use America as my main example. There's homelessness at an all time high, man. You drive from the East Coast to the West Coast. Hey, it's nothing but homeless encampments, man. Uh, even over here where I live, man, I, you go downtown and as you're driving downtown, hey, there's a whole bunch of just homeless people that are uh, laying on the side of the, the churches, on the side of the buildings. They're living under the highways and tents and stuff, man. Hey, and this is this is the world that Esau, Edom, the so-called white man has planned for you people, man, because he ultimately wants to control everything. You know, he wants you to own nothing and be happy about it. And so uh, continuing, it says the unintended consequences of current models of growth are simply not sustainable on a finite planet, which when the Heavenly Father made the earth, hey, these things, they uh, uh, they were they were looked upon as seen as good, you know, and they were uh, set up to be uh sustainable all by themselves you know when you go to school over here in america and you learn about things you learn that nature is uh reproductive you know you're constantly have plants growing con uh oxygen is constantly being um uh what's it called created you know for lack of a better word you know there it's constantly being pr produced you know but with all these trees and all and all these uh animals that are going extinct now you're starting to have the world off of balance all right. And now everything is starting to die off. And that's why you see uh, Esau saying all this, man. He's causing all this chaos, all this uh, destruction and then telling you that they have to take they have to take control of it. And the only way that they can do that is by what? By charging you for it. 
you know, putting it on the balance sheet, making sure that you're not using more than what you need to, you know, and then if you do use more than what you need to, what are they going to do? Hey, well, they're going to throw you in these FEMA camps, man. You know, they're going to find a way to de- uh, to detain you. All right. They're either going to ship you off into these wars, man, or they're going <laughs> to they're going to make you serve them in these uh, quarantine camps, man. You know, these are the these are the things that the devil has planned for you. And so uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 58, and uh, I'm going to start at verse three. It says the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And that's right. As soon as a baby Edomite is born, man, first thing they learn how to do is lie, how to how to uh, indulge themselves in wickedness. And so it says in verse four, their portion, the poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. And that's right. The poison is like the poison of a serpent. Now, you do have some serpents that when they bite you, you can die within that next hour or even faster. And that's how Esau, Esau's poison is. Hey, as soon as he starts speaking these smooth words to you, these words that sound like they're go, like they're for your benefit. Hey, eventually it does what it destroys you, you know, from within. And we've seen that happen with all these different countries. Take Germany, for example. And so it says in verse five, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. And that's right, hey, because they know, hey, you can't hey, like a like that saying goes, you can't play a player, man. You can't hustle a hustler. You know, these guys, they know they they indulge on the left hand side, man, and wickedness. You know, so you try to uh, you trying to get one over on them. You try to you try to set them up. For the okie doke, you try you trying to hustle them. Hey, well, they're gonna see right through it because that's all they do. Every day they wake up, like it says in Micah two and one. Every day they wake up and practice these nefarious things, and uh, because they have they have it, it's in the power of their hand. You know, they're not doing it to to uh, achieve some some evil goal, or they're not doing it to to. Uh, um, what's it called uh build up a death star and and eventually leave this place no nah, man they're doing it because that hey it's just in them to be evil you know and so it says in verse six break their teeth oh yahweh in their mouth a hey, teeth usually symbolize power and so it says break out the great teeth of the young lions oh yahweh let them melt away as waters which run continually when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows let them be as cut in pieces and that's right as soon as he's planning on uh executing his his uh plan uh his nefarious plan, hey, hey, may Yahweh Bashim Shah destroy this guy, man. Hey, because it's only it's gonna continue to get worse, man. Until Yahweh Shah returns, we're gonna see a lot more happen. And so it says, verse seven, verse eight, Salakia, it says, As a snail which melteth, melteth, let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman that may not see the sun. Before your pots can fill the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. And that's right. A Yahweh Razah, we're not only called, we're chosen. We're going to be rejoicing in that day when Esau Edom is taken out. Why? Because all these plans that he's, he's uh, uh, planning to do, all these schemes that he's planning to um, to initiate, hey, it's all going to be for naught. You know, like the scriptures say, hey, d- uh, disappoint him, O Yahweh. And so it says in verse 11, so that a man shall say, verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. And that's right. These people are very soon going to find out that there is a God in the heavens. Hey, and he's for the so-called Negroes, Latinos or North American Indians. Moreover, the elect and the one third of that nation, because we still have two thirds of our people that refuse to hearken unto the heavenly father, which that's all right, man. This was all written. All right, we were put on game since the beginning that these things were going to take place. So this isn't anything surprising, but just know that if you're measuring the time diligently, man, a hey, it's high time to awake, repent, return unto Yahweh by Shemuel Shai because hey, these things are about to take place. It's about to go down, man. All right, there's not very much time. You have all these all these uh, preppers. All right, like Patrick Humphrey, uh, that dude Steve Ram that you would uh, I just showed you. Uh, there's also another guy off grid desert. I uh, forget his full title. You can look that up and uh, actually watch a couple of his videos. Uh, they're pretty to wild, very edifying, at least with uh, with uh, current events. You know, and, and once you start watching these things, you start linking everything up. A uh, It may be that you your eyes are open to all the, the wickedness that is taking place. A, and then once it's open, there's no more denying it, man. You know, this these things are happening right before our eyes. And if you're not taking heed, instead you're scoffing, you're being a demon. Hey, well, the Heavenly Father's going to get you, man. 
You know, it may not be today, may not be tomorrow, hey, but very soon the most high is gonna put you to death, man. And so, hey, it's high time to repent, to return unto Yahweh by Shemi Al Shai. Hey, keep your eyes peeled because the devil is walking around seeking whom he may devour. All right, and now it's coming to a point where he's not even trying to hide it. All right, he's just coming out and saying it. And if you don't agree with it, well, hey, then you're gonna be painted as a terrorist and extremist, all right, as a no gooder, and then you're gonna be put in prison, these FEMA camps, and so on and so forth, man. And so with that being said, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory once again unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and until the next time I say, Shalom.